It's a beautiful day here in the Ballandalich estate on the River Spey. It's always a bit of a conundrum for salmon anglers in this weather. It's lovely to fish in the warm air and blue skies. As we all know, the salmon do tend to keep their heads down in the bright sunshine. Still, I'm optimistic as I head up to fish on the estate's March pool at the top of the beat. This afternoon I'm going to be fishing on the north bank of the pool. It's a secluded journey once you enter the grounds of the estate and I passed a lovely Ion pool on the way. It's a pool that's eluded me so far in terms of landing of fish, but I do love the way the pool flows, so I always fish it with confidence. I know it's been productive for others, so I'll stop and have a cast there on the way back after the March pool. I have to thank my friend Sean Harvey for capturing some fantastic aerial film for me earlier in the week. He doesn't mind taking a risk to get the shot of the line he wants. The March pool is in fine condition and the water is a good height. It's carrying a little colour which is common for this time of the year on the spay. I park up and set out through the woods to reach the top of the pool. I can't see the neck of the pool because the pool lies in the boundary with Tolkien's D beat. So we start fishing at Ballandalach about halfway down. As I make my way up the footpaths, my mind turns to the past memories of this pool. It's one that's been good to me over the years, so I'm hopeful of some success today. The spay has always held a special place in my heart. The salmon that return to this river each year are a magnificent species, well worthy of the worldwide fame. There aren't many salmon anglers in the world who don't yearn for such an opportunity to fish this famous river. The March Pool itself is a famous holding pool in the spay. Fish can be found lying anywhere along its length as they take a break before running the fast flowing stretches of Lower Tulchin. It's to our advantage here in Ballandalic in these brighter conditions, as the fish are more likely to be in the deeper sections in the lower half of the pool. I just hope I'm right. This bank is in stark contrast to the shallow shingle of the opposite side. There is a steep grass decline and the water's edge is littered with rocks and boulders, which have proven in the past to be a tricky wade. It's a difficult cast to make from the bank, but I'm going to keep out of the water to start with regardless and try not to disturb any fish that might be idling at the edge. The conditions have suggested to me a full floating line as I think the fish will be sitting quite high and they won't have far to come for the fly if they want it. A deep channel runs very close to the bank so I don't have to cast right over the pool to cover the fish. I keep the line at 45 degrees and let it swing in from about midway across the river. I'm sticking with the Foxford shrimp that has proved deadly this last couple of days. It's a fly I now have high confidence in. There can be a tendency to want to move the fly when fishing water at this slow pace, but I think it's quick enough and I'm letting the fly wander across the channel at its own pace, just an inch or two under the surface. If there are fish here, then this fly is bound to be aggravating them. It's a waiting game and I just need to be patient and make sure I cover all the lies. That's a take. I strangely managed to immediately recover a lot of line and the fish comes towards me fairly easily. I've had fish do this to me before, so I'm wary about how it might react when it gets too close. I feel it pulling and it's obviously realised it's been hooked and is struggling now to escape from the hook. I can tell from the vibrations through the rod, it's going to go on a run soon.
They moved a lot of water there. So this is a decent enough fish. Definitely into the teens. It continues to take line and I make sure I keep the tension on like the drag on my Sarasuna reel feed the fish line when it needs to. I love the way this reel seems to speak to me when playing a fish. This rod is a 13 foot 7 Atlas 9 weight from Scott McKenzie. The line is a matching 42 foot floating head and I have a 10 foot clear floating poly leader and about 10 feet of clear green 15 pound Maxima. The Foxford shrimp I showed you earlier in the video was on the point. What more do I need to say about this fly's ability to get me into a fish? It's definitely a firm favourite now. The fish as normal tries to push upstream, but I try to limit how far it goes. The more line out, the harder it is to keep control of the fish. Line out introduces slack which in turn brings the risk of losing the fish. I recover line as fast as I can to try to keep as much tension on as possible without overburdening the load I'm applying on the fish. I managed to get it back where I want, but is again pushing hard upstream and is taking line again. This is going to be a back and forth game with this fish until I can tie it out. I just need to keep concentrating and try to predict its next move, which, with salmon as we all know, is easier said than done most of the time. As it gets closer, I see glimpses of the fish, and I see silver flanks writhing in the peaty coloured water of the spay. I'm starting to get nervous now with this fish, it really does not want to come in. Steve Brand, the Ballandulic head gilly, has chosen his time well and is now by my side on the bank. His instructions are calming and I'm hoping we can work together to land this one. Steve lets me know where he wants the fish to be landed in and enters the water with stealth. He has no net with him, which makes me a little nervous, but he's a seasoned gilly, so I'll just let him do his thing. The fish has obviously sensed a change but does not have the energy to make a full run. It just boils idly on the surface but still manages to keep its distance. I continue to recover a few yards of line at a time as I work it closer to Steve. It was a decent take and I immediately felt the weight so it was turned quite quickly. Hopefully the fly is well set and I can get this one in. If the fish turns like that, Mostly it will drive the hook in and it will set well. That's the plan anyway, but as always, I need to prepare for the worst and be careful playing this fish. I feel it burying its nose in the river in a bid to disengage the hook, so I pay out a little line to calm it down. That's a trick I learned a few years ago, and it really does work. Hey, it's not a bad fish, eh? It continues to come in and I apply more pressure. I'm feeling its weight but no real resistance so I continue to inch it in. Steve is waiting patiently with no fuss and he's not putting me or the fish under any stress. This is a very good lesson in Gillian. I take confidence he's there to land a fish when the time comes. It's close now and I lift the rod to draw it in further. It moves away in one last act of defiance but I keep the pressure on and draw it back in again. Steve gently takes the leader and simply guides the fish in. One swift grab and he has a firm hold of its tail. No net needed and the fish hasn't even left the water. That's it landed now and I feel justifiably relieved. What a great battle here in the march pool. There it is. It's a 12 pound henfish. She's not as fresh as I first thought. She's lost the silver shine of a fish that's just come in from the sea. 
I'd say she probably entered the fresh water of the spay about a week or so ago, and made her way here to the March pool at Ballandale. Not that that matters. I'm absolutely delighted with this fish, especially in these trying conditions. What a great fight. It's possible she stopped here on her way further upstream, but I have a feeling she's been here for a few days already and this is where she'll spawn. But who really knows, to be honest? The full life cycle of salmon is still unknown. What made her pick this exact spot to take a fly no one will ever know. Well, I'm glad it was my fly she took, as I bid her farewell, whatever her journey may take her. <laughs>